Channel 4 News with five-time Emmy Award-winning anchor... Mandu Plays. Mandu Plays. Sports. Mandu Plays. Weather. And your reporter in the field... Mandu Plays. It's Channel 4 News at... Right now. And here we are back into the swing of things. It's been another week and we have another Dev Diary from Paradox. This time number 219, Selectable Traditions. Let's dive in and find out what on earth is going on this week. In Dev Diary number 214, when they announced the LEM update and the Custodians issue initiative, they did also talk about making selectable traditions. They are acknowledging that mods for a long time have extended traditions, which is, is good. I mean, that's what the community's done. And they know that we are wanting more traditions for specialization. What they're talking about here is they didn't want to overload us with, uh, with choice too soon. And they haven't quite talked about uh, exactly how we'll be selecting these traditions but from the images that they've shown us it looks like you'll start off with empty tradition slots and as the game goes on you will be able to fill these slots with seven tradition and you can pick which tradition tree you want to go into one of these seven slots so I think as you unlock your traditions you will gain access to and have the ability to uh, slot them by adopting one of them so uh, they haven't quite shown exactly how it's going to work but but that's what I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do here and they've shown us which traditions we're going to have available and what are they well here is here is the block of them as you can see quite a few of the traditions are the same if you count the total here they've actually only added three tradition trees we'll go into those in a minute but first let's take a look at the tradition trees that have carried over from the previous edition from from what we're all used to and we'll see what changes are being made to them because they are making changes to the individual traditions so the first tree domination that we're going to talk about what's happening well there are two changes here the first judgment call is no longer increasing crime prevention but rather makes your enforcers produce an additional unity or actually the wording here is produces one unity so I'm not actually sure if they are removing the unity production from enforcers and you're now only getting that through judgment call which is going to make them an even worse job or not we'll have to find out when we get the patch notes the other thing is the finisher and this is going to upset some of you the finisher is no longer plus one monthly influence but rather a 10% ruler output bonus and for just out it 10% admin cap so that's pretty rubbish the influence in the in the in the early game could be quite useful for fast expansion if that was what you were going for but replacing that with a 10% ruler output boost is it's really not something that I think is is great that they've reduced the functionality of uh, domination a little bit here next we have diplomacy and it's important to note with this one that before if you weren't a machine empire you had access to diplomacy otherwise you had access to adaptability now it's going to be possible for any empire to have access to adaptability though on this note they have kept harmony and synchronicity such that if you are just out you will get synchronicity and if you are uh, if you're not if you're a regular empire you have access to harmony and that's one of the choices which you you don't have a choice on basically and another one is that versatility is available to all machine empires but looking at diplomacy now what are the changes here so open markets they replaced it with diplomatic networking what does that mean embassy pacts now produce three unity in the early game if you find some neighbors and you establish uh, embassies with them that's a nice little bonus to have is it worth an entire tradition probably not it's one it's definitely one of the weak ones uh, but overall that's that's a change I suppose secure shipping has been replaced with eminent diplomats uh, that is such that the diplomatic acceptance is increased by plus five and and here's an important one now your envoys that are improving relations have a one percent chance per month to gain a favor from the target empire so this means you can simply put a diplomat into improving relations with another empire and you'll have a small chance every month of gaining a favor now how long does it take well at a one percent chance 
Uh, I've done the maths and that means that at 1%, on average after 69 months, you would have a favor. Well, 50% of the time, uh, after 69 months, you would have acquired a single favor. Is that massively useful? Maybe. Again, we'll just have to see how this one shakes out while we're looking at the others as well. Next on this, we've also got the insider trading. It's going to be replaced with trust or bust. Tra tra trust cap plus 50, trust growth plus 33%. That's kind of nice if you're playing against the AI, absolutely. And the finisher here is going to be uh, no longer increasing trust cap and growth. We saw that before, but it isn't going to increase your diplomatic weight by 10% and plus one envoy. Now that's pretty cool. That's nice. As someone who likes to play in the galactic community uh, and, and around that kind of area, I find that quite a nice finisher to have. In addition to the envoy you're going to get right at the start uh, for, for or early on in this tree. And now we have Harmony. So what have they got now? Mind and Body now also increases your leader skill cap by one. Kinship, the effect on the demotion time has been buffed from minus 50% to minus 75%. Bulwark of Harmony is gone though. They've removed that from Harmony and they replaced it with Harmonious Directives for plus one edict cap. In my opinion, the Bulwark or Bulwark of Harmony was one of the only reasons to really take Harmony as, as an effective tradition. This plus one edict cap is nice, but really I think this is quite a big nerf to Harmony uh, overall. Supremacy has lost the adoption ability where you gain plus two starbase cap. Instead, now you gain plus 20 naval cap. I would argue that's in a lot of ways better. It more fits in with uh, what you're trying to do with supremacy, which is build up a fleet. The great game has also been removed. They removed its old effects and now all it does is increase damage to star bases by 20%. That's that's definitely a down downgrade there. I'm I'm not massively thrilled about that change. And the final update is prosperity. No longer does the finisher provide merchant jobs based on the number of pops there are on a planet. Instead, it simply increases stability by plus five. That's equivalent to a 3% boost in trade value and a 3% boost in resource output. That's okay. I don't know if a merchant job is better or worse than that. I mean, if you're focusing on having a specific number of pops, a pop working a slightly better job is definitely not as good as a 3% bonus to resources across the board if you keep the number of pops the same. But whether that's uh, a side grade or a downgrade, I'm not completely sure on yet. I'd need to look at the overall maths of it and look how it plays out. Right, so we now have access to three new tradition trees that we've never seen before. What are they? They are Mercantile, Unyielding and Subterfuge. The last two, Unyielding and Subterfuge, you're only going to get access to them if you have the Nemesis DLC. And Mercantile, though, that was intentionally, apparently, meant to be unlocked by Megacorp. But no, instead they're going to give it to everyone. Why is that? Well, and this is going to be a big one, they are changing the trade policies in the policy tab. No longer will you be able to convert trade value into anything other than energy unless you take the mercantile policy. Before, we used to be able to split trade value between energy and consumer goods or energy and unity, but now you need a specific tradition from the mercantile tradition. That's a massive change. That is a slap in the face for a lot of empires. But what are the traditions in this free tradition tree, mercantile? So the first one, the adoption, is plus one star-based collection range, plus five trade protection. That's mediocre at best, not particularly fantastic, nothing to write home about. Number one, trickle up economics, uh, quite a funny name there actually I think, but that is going to increase the base trade value provided by clerks by one. That's actually quite big, um, that's very interesting. I'd like to see something that increased the trade value of plants, we have that as well later on, but, but to increase the base value of clerks would be good. Maybe if we had a building that could do that as well, that might be getting closer to a balance of trade value being a useful resource to use as opposed to just making technicians or the general economic model that we have in Stellaris. Now, number two, commercial enterprises, commercial zones, building now provides one merchant job. That's really good. That means that if you go for this one first, you can get an extra merchant on your capital very early in the beginning of the game at your third tradition pick. That's 
that's quite powerful. So next we've got adaptive economic policies can convert parts of their trade value into unity or consumer goods. Uh, that's what we talked about slightly earlier where we, we've lost that ability now as a regular empire unless we get to this adaptive economic policies. Uh, but, but obviously just to jump back actually to commercial enterprises, as commercial zones and clerks aren't particularly powerful, yes it's a bonus for them, but as you probably won't be building that building, it's not really that important if you're not building it or going for some sort of trade build. Following that we have marketplace of better ideas, increases trade value by 10%, insider trading, move from the diplomacy traditions and this reduces your market fee by 10%. And finally, a finisher, which increases your trade value by a further 10%. I mean, this is all good, but we still don't have what I'd like to see, which is an edict to increase trade value. That would be really powerful. That'd be really useful and really thematic if it were locked behind this mercantile tradition. Overall, I'd say mercantile is whelming. I'm, I'm not underwhelmed specifically, but I'm, I'm definitely not overwhelmed. It's, it's simply whelming. Unyielding is the first tradition that we're looking at locked behind the Nemesis DLC paywall. So what do you get here? Adoption plus two starbase cap, increased starbase upgrade speed by 50%. That's pretty good. That's pretty useful, I suppose. That's pretty much stolen from a piece of uh, what we used to have in Supremacy, at least the starbase cap is. Resistance is frugal, number one here. Stronghold buildings produce three additional unity and defense army health is increased by 33%. That's interesting. That's kind of okay. It's interesting that it's the building themselves produ producing the unity, I suppose. Uh, you don't even need to have the jobs. So that means you can have strongholds as a direct production uh, transfer between energy to upkeep them and maintain them directly into three unity. Kind of weird, but interesting interaction. Next, next we have Never Surrender. Reduce planetary bombard damage by 25%. I wonder if this is multiplicative or additive to the other reduction bonuses you get, for instance, from the planet being set to a specific stance or from the uh, from synchronicity, I think it is, or, or one of the other traditions. Uh, comment down below because I can't remember what it is, but I know there's a tradition somewhere in one of the trees that reduces your bombardment damage by a fraction. And then, of course, planetary shield generators. Maybe with this, you could reduce your bombard damage on planets down to, say, 5% of the actual value, meaning that your clone armies and shielded fortress worlds are going to be insanely impregnable. Look out, Death Stars, you've got a new use. Uh, next, Bulwark of Harmony, that's moved to here from Harmony, okay. That makes Unyielding pretty cool. Fortress Doctrine increases the hit points and damage of star bases and defensive platforms by 33%, reducing your upkeep cost by 20%, that's okay. Defense in Depth increases star base cap by two, reduces upgrade cost by a further 50%, or well, not a further 50%, but 50% in general. That's the upgrade costs, actually, not the upkeep. And in addition, uh, the owners of Nemesis will also increase hostile operation difficulty by plus four for the sabotage starbase operation. The finisher is max defensive platforms plus 50%. Again, because platforms don't have access to X-slot weapons, in the late game starbases are pretty useless because your X-slots are going to turn up and snipe them from the very edge of the system. So whilst it's useful, it's not completely amazing. Definitely not. And finally, we have Subterfuge. This, I, I must admit, uh, given the given the way that Nemesis operations work, that when you get the DSA, the way the operations work, how most of them are relatively useless, to be quite frank. It is good to have intel. It is nice. Uh, it is also good to be able to steal technology. But a lot of them are really quite underwhelming in terms of cost and effectiveness. This simply improves your ability to do those underwhelming things. You get higher code breaking, higher encryption. Uh, those are the, the starter and the first one, number one. Number two, increased code breaking operational skill. Number three, uh, increased hostile operation difficulty and hostile operation cost and upkeep is increased by 50%. Number four, double agents. Whenever a hostile operation targets us fails, we gain 10 intel on the offending empire. Number five, shadow recruits increase infiltration speed by 50%. Finisher, successful operations refund half of their cost on infiltration level. Great, that was all of them. We went through them quickly, but basically because of the ineffectiveness of operations, taking subterfuge 
then becomes a little bit useless. I can't really see why you'd ever want to take this unless you're doing something of a roleplay perspective, you know, that's something like that. Against other players, it's, it's very not helpful, to be quite frank. None of these bonuses are really going to be helping you overall. Of course, I could be wrong. If you disagree with me on this one, please comment it down below. This is just my opinion, absolutely. So what is the general feeling here? How has it been? Well, overall, I was hoping that with these new tradition changes, we would get improved traditions and some new traditions, meaning that uh, beelining for unity rather than uh, tech rushing, unity rushing, might be some sort of viable strategy. But unfortunately, it seems that what they've done in a lot of places here is downgrade or sidegrade certain options to give room for these other options you have in the in in these three new traditions it's 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 not fantastic i am happy that they're bringing this change in absolutely i think it's really a nice change to have being able to select traditions like this it's got a lot of adaptability in the future they can add new traditions and components with new dlc and i hope that is something they do do but it is not quite the change i had personally been hoping for um overall that's that's where i'm left with this uh I, i'm happy but there is still a slight bitter taste in my mouth but let's keep going let's keep seeing what they're developing and hopefully the next diary that we see the next dev diary is going to blow us away but don't hold your breath for too long <laughs>